Welcome to Briarfest News. There is a lot to cover in this video from more news about virtual Briarfest, the single day ticket sales, and new model reveals. All of this news has come out over the course of a week, but I did not do a video on it yet because doing more than one Briarfest news video a week is really taking away time from me working on other videos for you guys. So instead, I will only be doing weekly Briarfest news videos every Friday. We'll go ahead in order of how the news came out, starting off with the reveal of the pop-up shop classic or freedom scale model called Green Man. Done on Melanie Miller's walking draft horse, mole number 668, this mossy green colored model painted with a splatter technique features a horned green man on his barrel, a nod to the ancient Celtic god Serenus or something, I'm probably going to not be able to pronounce that right, with a face made of lush oak leaves and surrounded by flittering fairies. There is no better way to celebrate the start of the summer pastoral season than with a fun frolic through the woods. Come dance with the fairies and hail the Oak King's return with this magical model. Here is the actual model, and as you can see, he's got those various shades of green accented by gold hooves and gold fairies. And I think it's nice that he's done on a recent classic mold. I think his coloring and design actually really complements the mold well. My own thoughts for this guy is that I overall like him. I like the story and history kind of behind his design, and I think the horned green man on his belly is super cool. I am not fond of, however, the purple flowers on this model. They do not look like flowers to me. I get what they're kind of going for, but these look like ants or bugs more than flowers. That's really the only reason to dislike this guy for myself. It's just that those flower shapes don't look like flower shapes. Maybe I'm just not able to really see those right but they just, they don't look at all like flowers to me. Otherwise, I do really like this guy. I don't know yet if I will get him or not. I do really like the fact that he is very Celtic fling inspired, so I'm gonna have to think about it. A really big piece of Briarfest news that came out this week is how the special run line will work, and I actually think I may even do another video on this that goes over everything again and tries to explain it more because there is a lot of confusion about it still, I feel like. Briar came out with two blog posts about the special run process as well as a video from Jamie talking about it. I recommend you check out all of those, but right now I'll go over the main key points and I'm going to paraphrase it mostly instead of just reading everything because you can read and listen to the full information on Briar's website and social media. The virtual special run line this year will work similarly to how it was done for the Seattle Soray, which I wish I'd have screenshotted the selection process of those models, but oh well. For the Seattle Soray, we basically picked which models we wanted in order of preference. Now the Seattle Soray was different for a few reasons, one of which is that the two special runs you got had to be one special run from each group. For example, the first group was Bellevue and Nirvana. You could only get one of those models with your ticket, and then you could only get one of the other four special runs in the second group. Briarfest special runs don't work like that. There is no groups of models you have to choose from. You're able to just pick whatever you want out of the eight, or in this case of this year, nine special runs that you want to choose from. But the point I'm trying to get to is that we had to rank the special runs for the Seattle Soray in order of what we wanted within those two groups. For example, in the second group, we could choose from Pinshot, Storm, Duwamish, and Olympia. When we sent in our preferences for those four models via ranking, for example, for my ticket, I put my first choice as Storm, my second choice as Duwamish, my third choice as Olympia, and then my fourth choice as Pincho. A similar thing is happening with the Briarfest special runs. When the time comes, you will be sending in your preferences in order of how much you want each model. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But again, it's going to be a similar ranking system where you rank your first favorite, your second favorite, your third, your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way down to eight and nine. Once you send in your preferences, what Briar is going to do is similar to a number being drawn at the special run line in person. Whoever is at the front of the virtual line will get their top picks because the models for that time haven't sold out yet. But if your ticket ends up being towards the middle of the line, Maybe your first preference is already sold out, so you'll get your second and third preference instead. Or maybe your second preference is sold out, so then you get your first and third preference. For example, for the Seattle Soray, I know I didn't get a good spot in the line with my ticket because I was given my third choice special run, Olympia, 
instead of one of my first two choices. By the way, all of this, all of which place you end up in the virtual line and all that, a lot of that is automatic, I'm assuming, and we don't see the exact process of that. Briar's not going to tell you, oh, your number or whatever this in line, I don't think. They're just going to put the models you're able to get on your account. You don't like see your place in line or see like how many models are sold out at that moment of time of where you're in line at. That makes sense. Anyway, after you send your preferences in, you won't find out which models you get picked for until Briarfest. Some important points to highlight about this selection process is that the time period to send in your preferences is from June 1st to June 15th. If you do not send in your preferences during that time period, you can still get special runs, but your preferences will be random on what you can purchase. I should also point out that because I'm assuming with Briar needing to do this whole process with the special runs, three day ticket sales end on May 31st, unless they sell out by then. Now they did actually sell out of the tickets yesterday, but because people are getting refunds on their tickets, more have been popping up on Briar's website again. I think this is a strong indication, however, that the three-day tickets are likely going to sell out before the end of May. So if you want three-day tickets, I would recommend you get them sooner than later. Back to the special runs. Unlike at Briarfest in person, where you have the chance to purchase any of the special runs available during your special run time, you will only be able to purchase the two special runs that get picked out for you during the special run line. Although it is important to note that you are not obligated to purchase those two special runs, if you really don't like one of the models you end up getting picked for, you don't have to buy it. For example, if you got picked for your 7th or 8th choice and you weren't planning on buying that model, then you don't have to buy it. You can just buy the other one you got picked for or you don't have to buy either of them if you don't want either of them either. Another very important point is that you do not have to be online and purchase your special runs during the special run time. Your special runs will become available to purchase at that time, but you will have 24 hours to purchase them. For example, if I have a 10 a.m. special run time, at 10 a.m. the special run models I got picked for will show up on the Briar website. I will also get an email notifying me of this. I could purchase them right then, or I could purchase them later if I wanted to. Maybe I was busy at 10 a.m. and didn't have time to purchase them until like 5 p.m. that day. And that's completely fine. The special runs you get picked for will not sell out. Those two special runs are reserved for you to purchase within that 24-hour period. I know there is a couple little frustrating aspects of this, specifically the idea of not being able to pick from a variety of special runs during the actual Briarfest, but this does seem like the best system that Briar could possibly come up with that is still fair for everyone, and I think overall it's going to work well. I honestly think this is a lot better than a possible alternative of just making it a first come first serve basis, or trying to digitally have everybody in the special run line online at once and figuring out how to actually order them and then people trying to buy and order. Oh my gosh, it would take forever. I think those other options would just cause a lot more headaches and cause more upset fans. This method is a lot more fair. Of course, they're not going to be able to exactly replicate Briarfest experience of purchasing special runs, but this is a pretty good alternative. Right after Briar released this first batch of news about the special run line, there was a lot of uproar and concerns about the preference system for people that have multiple tickets. So the next day, Briar addressed that, explaining that they will be doing their best with this situation as well. They will be offering two different ways to submit your special run preferences. One way is to send in a master list, and another way is to choose for each individual ticket. The individual ticket is pretty straightforward. You rank your preferences for each ticket. Briar gives the example that this is great for families that maybe each have a special run ticket and have their own preferences, or maybe someone has a friend's ticket on their account and wants to pick preferences separately for that. But the other method, the master list method, is going to be a situation where you send in a master list of your preferences across all your special run tickets, and Briar will try their best to accommodate that so that you don't end up with duplicate special runs. Granted, you still could end up with duplicates, and they warn that they can't guarantee you'll get all the special runs you want or anything like that, but they are going to try their best. I'm going to go ahead and actually read this part that they put on the blog here to make it even more clear. This option will go down your list and select the highest ranked model available for each of your ticket times. If you are selected for preference 1 and 2 on your first time slot, the next two available options will be selected for your next time slot. You may still receive a duplicate model. Your highest available previously received preference if none of your remaining preferences are available during that time slot. 
it is not guaranteed that you will receive one of each of the special runs. Now, I know another concern about this, which has not been addressed by Briar yet, but I'm sure it will be by the time they send out the email to get our preferences, is what if you want duplicates of a certain model, which in this case for most people is going to be the surprise model. We don't know yet if we can tell Briar on these master lists, hey, this is my number one preference and I want two of them, or how that will work. I'm sure within this next month, Briar will address that. So don't panic. Don't stress out about it. I feel like I need to say that because some people appear to be stressing out about these different aspects of Virtual Briar Fest. Don't stress out, everyone. In fact, this process is kind of less stressful than actual Briar Fest in some ways. You don't have to worry about being at the special run line at a specific time. You don't have to make too many dire decisions at the special run line. Like if your top two or three choices sell out and you're not sure which model is your fourth choice because you didn't think about that, well now you don't have to worry as much because all that stuff has been already figured out ahead of time. You've already picked out what your fourth and fifth special run choices are. I hope this is all making sense. Maybe I will do a separate video going over this information again when we know even finer details of the process. But there is the overall gist of what we know so far. Let's move on to a different Briarfest topic. The Virtual Briarfest 5K, lots of information came out about that, about how you can participate. You can still do the 5K at your home and send Briar pictures of you in your Celtic theme 5K outfit. You also get your race medal hopefully by that day so you can have it during Briarfest Sunday. I will link the blog post with all the details on that. Remember that the proceeds go to a good cause, which is Old Friends, the racehorse retirement facility. Next piece of news is the virtual model horse shows. The open show is a virtual photo show this year. Breakables Live is also going to be virtual. The Resident Futurity show is canceled for this year, but I imagine it'll come back for 2021. The Children's and You show is also canceled this year, but they are offering something else, which sounds awesome. Instead of a show, they are doing a free live model horse showing clinic on Saturday, July 11th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. They said our judges will be focusing on a different class every half hour on Zoom. If you've ever wondered what halter showing is exactly, this is the perfect place to find out. Participants can show the judges their models and get live feedback or listen in to the judges' explanation of what they want to see in each class. The schedule will be posted soon so you can get your questions and models ready. Participants in this virtual experience will be required to register to receive the Zoom link. More information on that process will be released soon. Those who registered for the 2020 Briarfest Youth and Children's Shows will be automatically rolled over to Briarfest 2021. If you won't be able to participate in 2021, you are welcome to contact Briar Customer Service for a refund on your entry. I know it is disappointing that the actual Youth and Children's Show is not taking place, but this sounds really cool and a super awesome way for anyone to learn more about model horse showing. In some ways, you may even learn more from this because being at a live show can get a little hectic. You might not be able to focus in on everything a judge is giving advice on, or I don't know, maybe that's not for most people, but I know for myself, the chance to actually sit down and be able to focus in on just learning from the judges and not having to worry about showing my own models at the same time is going to be an awesome way to really learn some new stuff about model horse showing. I know I'm talking about this like I'm in the youth show or something, which I'm not, but I do plan to tune in to this model horse showing clinic during Briarfest. I know it does say it's for the youth and children's show, but I bet there will be a lot of good advice and knowledge given out, no matter your age or experience in showing. So yeah, that sounds so awesome, and I'm really looking forward to it. And then let me go over more about the virtual open show, which I actually signed up for, by the way. This is my first time technically showing at the Briarfest open show, which is really fun and exciting. I've already started working on my show prep and figuring out which models I'm going to show. But some important information about the open show. You have until May 15th to sign up, so if you want to sign up, you need to do it soon. You can also still refund or roll over your open show entry up to that date as well if you bought it before. There is no limit on the amount of models you can show, which is awesome. Normally there is a limit, but this year the only limit is that you are limited to two entries per class. Something I think that is really cool about this too is that the winners will be announced live on Friday, July 10th. I think it's cool that they're still going to announce the results actually during Briarfest. Briar will not be doing usual prize models for Briarfest Open. Normally glossy regular run models are the section champ and reserve prizes, and then there are special made overall champ and reserve prize models made. 
This year instead, Briar will be giving randomly selected spring or mid-year release models for section winners and randomly selected Briarfest special run models for overall champs. As well, all participants will receive a coupon code for $25 off a future purchase of $100 or more on briarhorses.com, valid on regular run items only. It doesn't say it on this blog post, but it does in the packet that they will also still be awarding flat ribbons, 1st through 10th place, and champion reserve rosettes. All awards and prizes will also be sent to you free. Now I know these prizes aren't as exciting as the super rare glossy models and special prize models, but there are still models being given away as prizes, and I think that is awesome. Plus, you do automatically get that $25 off coupon, whether you win anything or not, which I think is also a nice little addition. I'm honestly super excited about this. I'm excited to have the opportunity to show in this show at all, as much as I would love to show in the open show in person. It's just too hard for me to do it currently because I have too many other things going on during Briarfest. Plus, I don't want to ship or drive or fly my nice expensive show models all the way from California to Kentucky. Maybe someday I can do the open show actually at Briarfest, but this is a super nice alternative. Next up, let's see some model reveals. On Wednesday, Briar revealed the best customs contest prize models. First is Cornwall. This country in southwest England retains a distinct culture identity that reflects its history and is one of the Celtic nations. This part of Britain has a rich history and folklore and names among its early rulers, King Mark of Cornwall, of Tristan and something legend, I'm so sorry, I'm so bad at pronouncing everything, and King Arthur. Its flag, St. Pyrrhon's flag, is a white cross on a black background. Cornwall, the grand prize for this year's Best Custom Contest winners, was originally sculpted and designed by Summer Prosser as Latigo. He has been reimagined in a stunning shaded black blanket at Palooza using the same pattern as his first release in the Premier Club back in 2013, with map spots in his blanket, detailed striped hooves, and silver shoes. Here is Cornwall, and as it said, it's the same pattern as Latigo, but he is a shaded black instead of bay. There are only six made of each of these models, by the way, which obviously makes them super rare and expensive. This guy is pretty cool looking, but I will admit I'm not crazy about him probably because I wasn't a huge fan of the original Latigo. I don't even know why. I'm just not that crazy on him. And I'm not crazy about this guy either, at least not compared to last year's model, Leap of Faith for the Best Custom Contest, who was that black Bristol. Now that one I was crazy over. He was so cool looking. This guy is cool, but not necessarily a model I wish I owned. Then there is Breton. This is the language of the people of Brittany, a cultural region in the west of France that was inhabited by Celtic tribes, the same tribe of Britons that ultimately peopled the south coast of the British Isles. The state's flag, called Gwyn Hadu in Britain, is composed of nine horizontal alternating black and white stripes and an ermine canton that is representative of the former coat of arms of Brittany. This year's runner-up prize for Best Customs finalists has been done on our lovely Lipizzaner mold, sculpted by Kelly Seeley. He may be small in stature, but he makes quite the impression, finished in a shaded black Overo. First released in 2018 as our Premier Club bonus stablemate model, this little guy will make a lovely addition to your mini herd. Now, this guy I actually like more than Cornwall. He is super cute, and the pattern and color really complements him well. I don't know if there is even much more to say than that. He's very cute, and good luck to everyone entering the Best Customs Contest. Also on Wednesday, the Briarfest single day tickets went on sale. They are $17 each, or $75 for the four pack. However, the four pack is actually already sold out. It's sold out within 24 hours. I am surprised that the four pack was actually more than buying four individual single day tickets, but I guess it was a guarantee that you got all four models, so I can see why it's sold out. I thought about buying a four pack and I did not buy one soon enough, unfortunately, but that's ultimately okay. I think I might still order a single day ticket or two and see what stable mates I end up with, just because surprises are still fun. Briar showed a sneak peek on Thursday, which I'll be showing in more detail in a minute, but they also pointed out that they are frequently updating their Briarfest FAQ page. I went to check it out and saw an FAQ that I either missed in a previous blog post or it wasn't posted to the Briarfest blog, I'm not sure. But it's something that's pretty noteworthy, so I'm going to go ahead and go over it now. 
The question is, how can I buy this year's store specials or fling pop-up souvenir shop models? Briar goes on to say basically that it will be similar to how it is at actual Briar Fest. You will be limited to the amount of models you can buy. For example, they're not going to let you buy 10 of the same store special. You'll still be able to buy whichever models you want. You just won't be able to buy probably a bunch of duplicates of each model. But these models are on a more first come first serve basis it sounds like. They aren't like the special runs where you can have it sitting in your cart all day and then buy them at the end of the day. They also give some helpful examples for this too, saying basically don't wait around all day to buy them if you want these models. Buy them while you can before they sell out. Also like Briarfest, they said they will be adding inventory throughout the weekend. If your favorite store special sells out on Friday, you'll get the chance to try and purchase it again on Saturday and Sunday. Now we move on to the kind of last piece of Briarfest news, which isn't much, but it is a sneak peek for what we are assuming is the pop-up shop store plush. This is the sneak peek image, and it definitely looks like it's going to be probably a horse or possibly even a cow. I'm hearing some speculations about a cow, which would be super cool. But I'm guessing it's probably more likely going to be a horse, but who knows? They might do two store plushes this year, like they did in 2017, possibly. But we'll have to wait and see what this guy is. He will probably be revealed next week. I was actually expecting it to be revealed today, but it has not been revealed yet, so I'm guessing it's not being revealed today. But I'm sure we'll get to see it in the next Briarfest news video. Hello everyone, I was editing this video when Briar came out with a swag update, so we of course have to cover that. Briar has revealed the shirts for the Fling Souvenir Shop. They said, We are so excited for this year's Fling Souvenir Shop swag selection. Our swag presale starts on Monday, May 11th, and includes a huge variety of tanks and tees, plus hats and other gift items to celebrate this year's Celtic Fling. We've never had a pre-sale this big before and we are pulling out all the stops. The best news, you don't even need to be a Briarfest ticket holder to get in on this pre-sale. We've decided to open it up to everyone. Here is just a taste of what we'll be offering on the website starting next week. Pre-sale ends May 31st and all items will ship in mid-June. So it sounds like they're doing this so that you can get your Briarfest swag before Briarfest. And they do have a lot of different designs here. Oh my gosh. And they have designs that are clearly inspired by other things. There is so much. Oh my gosh. I don't even... Oh my gosh. Let's just actually get into it. So the first three here are labeled Briarfest exclusives. One says Celtic Fling with a plaid pattern over the uh, celebration horse. The next shirt says Naysayers Gonna Nay Briarfest 2020. And then the third one says Briarfest in this pattern of black and white and letters and stuff. Those are all pretty cool. The next three are labeled Celtic Fling Designs. We have another plaid design, but this time with the model Ben Ali with a purple plaid. Then there is this green and gold Celtic Fling one, which just has the kind of Celtic Fling logo for Briarfest this year. I actually really like this one a lot. That's probably my favorite, maybe, of these designs so far. Although this next one is also pretty cool. It is a Celtic knot-inspired thing that says Briarfest in the middle in red. The next group is probably going to be fun for fans of Game of Thrones. They are labeled Fun Briar Mashups. They are clearly Game of Thrones-inspired model horse shirts. One that says Mother of Models with Briarfest 2020. The one in the middle says House of Bristol with a Bristol model. And then the one on the right says House of Bridie with a Bridie model. Those are both super cute and really good ideas, I think. Next is two ladies tank tops. One that says Celtic Fling with the Celebration Horse. I'm actually really liking the color and stuff on this one. That looks pretty cool. And the other one is a very vibrant yellow with green Celtic fling and again that Celtic fling logo. And then the last t-shirts are youth sizes. The first one is the same as the adult one of this green and gold with Celtic fling and the logo. The middle one is a tank top with a really cute design of two horses in Celtic knots and they're kind of in the shape of a heart. I'm actually really digging that one. That looks so cute. And then the third is a Celtic Fling tank top of the same design as the other tank top we just showed, except it is in blue and white. So those are a lot of really neat designs. I probably want to get a Briarfest t-shirt, but I don't even know which one I'm going to pick. There are so many good ones this year, it seems. 
I'm kind of liking all of the designs they got going on this year. So there is that final update for you guys. That is it for Briarfest news this week. I know this is a little different for a Briarfest news video and a lot longer than what I normally do. Normally I try to come out with a video the moment there's new information, but with the rate that Briar's coming out with new information right now, it's just much easier for me to do it all in one big weekly news video. I hope this works for you guys too. You can let me know down in the comments below what you think about basically anything and everything we went over in this video. What do you think about Green Man or the best custom contest prize models? What do you think about this new special run system? Are you still confused by it and would want me to do another video covering it more in detail? You can let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, I will be hosting my own virtual Briarfest celebration the week of Briarfest. Now we'll have the schedule and details on that soon. There will be several chances to win free prizes as well during that week. I hope you all have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!